Hello, this is a PowerPoint introduction to Sixth Form Art of Stratford Grammar School and my name is Mr Lee. Okay, so art and design at A level is um, quite a unique subject in that um, it's heavily coursework based with um, practical work and uh, as such it requires a lot of individual exploration development of ideas and um, can go off in any any direction that the student chooses to uh, follow. Um, of course there is an exam in year 13 uh, but it is very heavily about what the student wants to explore and develop in terms of their ideas. Now uh, at Stratford Grammar School we um, often have small group sizes at sixth form. Now that gives us um, more opportunity to allow students to um, experiment with all different kinds of media and technique and scale um, and it, it gives them plenty of our individual teaching time as well. So we see small group sizes as an advantage at sixth form level. Um, our exam results have always been good uh, I think very good um, and one thing that we tend to have complete success is preparing students for uh, art and design courses degree courses after sixth form we've, we've always had students get into their chosen um, art courses, art and design courses after they've left us on the basis of their interviews for the courses or on the basis of their results. Now we have two art rooms at school and um, they are available for students, sixth form students, um, when you might have study periods which are your non-lesson periods. Obviously bearing in mind that we don't have any low school students in there already. Right, so the exam board that we use for our A-level course is AQA and it is the fine art endorsement um, which within its um, structure allows students to do uh, lots of different kinds of work um, drawing painting, 3D work, ceramics, uh, textiles if they wish so there's a broad remit within that particular endorsement which we find suits our students um, the best really. Within the course there's two components there is the main coursework component which is called the personal investigation that runs from the start of the course year 12 through to Christmas of year 13 so it's a year and a term and that is uh, the students opportunity to look at a particular theme or area of art and investigate that as the title suggests in different ways so it's a thorough investigation. Uh, that is mainly practical. There is a written element in there as well, which is a, um, a journal type uh, recording uh, of work, written uh, recording of work, which is between 1,000 and 3,000 words. And overall, that constitutes 60% of the A-level mark. Uh, component two is the exam component and that's called the externally set assignment. That begins in February, the start of February in year 13, uh, and it runs through to uh, April of year 13, and the students are given an exam paper. There are seven starting points on the exam paper. Students choose one, and then you search and develop that chosen starting point over February, March into April uh, to produce at the end of it a, an exam piece or pieces which uh, is a 15 hour practical piece of work. 15 hours, that's three full school days. And that is 40%, that's the remaining 40% of the A level mark. So throughout the course we have always organised that you have at the 
two art teachers, that's myself, Mr Lee and Ms Jotman. So you get the benefit of both of our skills. Okay, so the first investigation component uh, breaks down. We've organised the breakdown of that uh, component. So uh, in the first term of year 12, we have a series of uh, technical modules where we ask you to experiment with a few different uh, techniques, trying different ways of working, just as a, a little foundation um, project um, that just, just gets you into thinking uh, as an A-level art student. Um, that's the first term up until Christmas. So after Christmas in year 12, that's when we like students to start thinking about what their personal investigation would uh, be about. If there's anything that they might have um, investigated, perhaps for GCSE, art and design, or anything that they've used or done in the introductory modules in the first term, they can develop that further if they wish. So the spring term of year 12 is about doing some thorough research and thinking about some initial work, some initial experiments, ideas. And then as you move into the summer term of year 12, then the students can be developing these into perhaps larger pieces or more, more thorough pieces. Um, and the idea is that it doesn't work up to one individual resolution or final piece. Um, the course is intended for students to try lots of different ways of working within a particular theme or a topic. Um, that is better really because uh, it can be a bit narrow if the students just choose to develop work in terms of painting or for one particular area. So we do encourage students to try lots of different things as they develop their ideas. So into year 13, autumn term, um, that's when the personal investigation kind of heads towards its conclusions um, and we start to work on the written element a little bit more, which is the, uh, the supporting essay, as it were, or journal that is um, based upon what the students have done for their practical work. Now, I've uh, organised some examples of some personal investigation work to begin with, different kind of categories as well, so you get an idea about what the students have done. Now, these examples, it's not the entirety of what the students produce for their personal investigations. These are perhaps some of the, the resolutions, the final pieces, if you wish, uh, for what they did. So this first slide here is a student um, from about eight, ten years ago called Anna. And her, um, the, the way that she liked to work very much was uh, painting. These are acrylic paintings, um, large acrylic paintings, perhaps about four... I think the one on the left is about four foot square. So they're, they're large scale and um, architecturally focused in terms of their, uh, these are buildings from Manchester, the town hall in the background for the first one. Um, and Anna spent a lot of time taking photos in Manchester and then worked these up into paintings and other pieces of work as well. So there were prints as well as, as just the paintings. Okay, this uh, next student is Rachel Clark, um, and Rachel, again, like Anna, was uh, just a very keen painter. And these, again, large scale, I know the one on the right-hand side of the three images there, again, it's about sort of four foot, four foot tall. These are all acrylic paintings again. And, uh, and uh, sorry, Rachel's theme was... Um, I think she started off with sort of surfaces and then it developed into musical instruments and looking at the shapes and forms uh, that you have in different musical instruments. And it became kind of cubist paintings where you have overlapping sections from different 
and musical instruments. Uh, so it became like a composition that was abstract rather than fully representational. But she could also paint very realistically as well, as you can see from um, certain of the painting on the left. Okay, this is a student from last year, Caitlin, um, who wanted to use as her focus a portrait. She, she, she was very good at um, painting portraits. And this is, I think, her grandfather. I think it's her grandfather as a subject. So again, working from photos. Um, grandfather smoking, so we have the smoke patterns. And also she wanted to get across the idea that her grandfather was, was very interested in music as well. So that's why you've got musical uh, notes from the staves in smoke, which you can see just above the heads. Now, um, the one in the middle was the one that Caitlin did first out of the three, and that's the acrylics. That one is about, that's about four foot tall, and the two either side she did in oils uh, they're the second and third ones that she did and they are they're more like uh, five six feet tall so they are very big pieces of work and she worked them photos and there are experimentations in using paint uh, in different ways different techniques sometimes realistically sometimes uh, in more sort of expressive ways Okay, these are two portraits by Annie, uh, about sort of four years ago these were done. A uh, bit of a change of style from the previous ones in that these are much more expressive in terms of the use of colour. Um, and these are uh, colleagues of Annie's in the sixth form that she took photos of and then worked up into uh, these very expressive but I think they're full of character, these, these two paintings here. Again, these were part of her personal investigation. The early part, really, she then sort of moved into doing portraits of her friends from the water polo team that she played for. So then she was looking at shapes of water and reflections. So these were the kind of start of the portraits within her personal investigation, but moved to a slightly different focus later on, which is... Um, something you can do within the personal investigation because of the length of time that you spend doing it. Okay, some various ones here. Um, on the left, we've got, as you can see, that's a, a big Batman. Again, a very big piece of work that's about six foot tall, um, that painting in real life. And it's, it's again, it's an experimentation using paints. Uh, so the image is obviously one that James found. Um, a fat man and then just wanted to play around with colour using a, a really wide brush, different um, densities of paint, so some runs, some is quite thick, um, and I think it turned out really well at the time. Above, Alice Cheng did, uh, she, she wanted to look at reflections and, and choose some of the trickiest things to paint, and that's a um, set of bubbles that are all kind of overlapping on top of each other using um, one of those bubble straws and the fairy liquid. So she took photos of bubbles all together and then did these, again, quite large paintings. That one is about four, four foot across, I think. And over on the right there, Menas, uh, again, six foot painting. All of these paintings are pretty big. And that's done using some petite dyes for the background as well as some acrylics as well. There's also some collage work on there with the butterflies. All right, so the next section is some three-dimensional work. And again, quite varied work here that I chose to put on for you. Uh, on the left, um, a student called Mace wanted to do uh, kind of lanterns or furniture that's furniture or house accessories and she used the designs that she'd done on um, over in design tech and put them through the laser cutter so she produced these very uh, ornate designs for lanterns 
above uh, that's uh, Tom that's from that's about 12 years ago and he experimented with magnetic fluids for both his uh, personal investigation and his exam so the properties of magnetic fluid so he ran magnets through this fluid that we have to buy in and then took these close-up photos and this is one of the fluid on a, uh, uh, a drill bit so it's very kind of close-up photography and on the right Pfizer did a series of accessories like this hat based upon food so that one's an enormous uh, hat based on ice cream even with a cherry on the top Okay, some more three-dimensional work here. On the left, this is a photo of a crucified uh, Christ figure that was done by Dean, uh, getting on for nearly 20 years ago now, and that's, that's quite an old piece of work. But it's still a thing, I believe. And uh, on the right, we have a plaster piece of work, that's plaster casts of uh, biscuit trays and sweet trays and Kim arranged them and got them cut and sliced on a big circular board um, so it looked like a plan view or a high view of a futuristic city or town uh, which kind of fitted into her next step which was an architecture course. Okay, some more three-dimensional work here. Left another piece by uh, Dean which is an enormous bin bag head. You can kind of see how big that is from the photo uh, based upon Easter Island heads. In the middle is uh, by Tom, that was uh, an angel figure made with Meccano and bits of bike, um, gears, mesh, all sorts, all sorts just kind of lashed together, which, which hung from the ceiling in my room for a while. And then on the right, um, from Anna, a, an owl uh, that was made from bits of coke cans, snipped up coke cans for the feathers and tin foil. Um, and this was part of a few different pieces that she did for a personal investigation, making animals from different kinds of materials. Okay, so different. Um, approaches to the person investigation. So on the left, Jack did um, some photos. Jack wanted to work in uh, photography. So this is just one of very many that he took around town. And he was focusing on composition, choosing the right combination of buildings and copying composition to make it effective, to make something that was uh, something that we, we can see a lot of the times that we go into town, just a little bit more interesting and eye-catching. In the middle, Andrew did a, an enormous map of the um, British Isles uh, as an anatomical diagram with hearts and lungs and brains and all that sort of thing. Again, huge scale. And then Hibbo explored the seven wonders of the world using different materials. And this was Taj Mahal done as a pig. So that was very nice to read. Okay, so uh, the second component is the external set assignment, that is the exam. It takes place between term year 13, that's the start of February, get the exam papers given out. Seven starting points, and it's provided by the exam board, AQA. A student chooses one, and then over the, the next sort of three months, February, March, and April, the exam takes place at the end of April. The students research and develop work based upon that starting point, and that can fill a sketchbook full. Um, so it's quite an intense assignment. At the end of it, they're working towards a 15 hour, three day practical exam. So it's not a written exam, it's a practical exam in which they produce one or more pieces of work. And overall, it's worth 40% of the total A level mark. So although it's just three uh, months worth of work, it does constitute quite a large part of their overall course uh, mark. 
Okay, so again, I can categorize these into uh, different kinds of artwork. So um, on the left, Kim, this is a painting, large painting that she took um, from a photo. She, she, one of the friends put some face paint on, one of the friends took some photos and then did some work from that. And then Rachel on the right there, uh, again, large painting, about four foot wide, which was reflective properties of kind of cut glass with liquids inside them. Almost kind of abstracting in its approach. So these are all 15 hour pieces of work. These were done in three hours, uh, sorry, three days. Okay, um, again, that's uh, the artwork on the left there from Kane. That's based upon photos from uh, Manchester, but done in a very expressive style using painting tools, thick layers of paint, edges of rulers, that sort of thing, of buildings kind of mid construction. The middle picture there is by Alice, uh, who did a series of these cloud paintings. So again, working from photos and turning those into, um, I think they're oil paints, oil paintings. Um, she did about four or five of these within 15 hours. Just the sky, different times of day, different colours in the sky. And on the right, that's probably the biggest painting that anyone's ever done for us. That's about eight foot tall in real life. Uh, and that's um, by Aisha, uh, kind of a Art Nouveau type design with the roses and the figure and pattern work in there. Okay, this, this is one of the, uh, the quirkiest exam pieces we've ever had by Melissa. Uh, and, and this is purely a confectionery based, cake based outcome. So Melissa spent 15 hours, most of it, making all these cakes and uh, assembling kind of different confectionery designs using round items, mainly things like Smarties or other round sweets like rough hearts. And the uh, question that she was working to was dots, dots, D-O-T-S. Uh, so she really took this to a completely unexpected level in terms of her approach. But it worked and she got a really good mark for it. Okay, this is Tom and his magnetic fluids. Again, these are kind of uh, on drill bits um, and springs, you can see there on the right, uh, and uh, very high quality photographs taken of the magnetic fluid doing strange things depending upon the object that it was uh, put on. So again, a very scientific approach really, very different way of looking at uh, art and making art. Right, um, now these are just some of the, the more direct career opportunities that would lead from uh, doing art and design at sixth form. A lot of design based uh, work there as well as uh, often in the creative industries that could be film and TV as well, advertising, um, because it does require you to <coughs> think creatively all the way through and adapt and solve problems. So it's very applicable to a lot of different further career opportunities. Okay, so um, thank you for watching this presentation and there are our contact details. Uh, if you need to get in touch, by all means, uh, my email is on top one there.